Welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Nowadays I'm exploring the capabilities of the Airbus A320 and all the things that we can do with this plane. And I'm doing a series of videos. This is another video in that series. And in this video I'm going to show you how to perform an RNAV approach and a landing using the Airbus A320. RNAV is um, a kind of a, a thing which not most of the people related to flight simulation are familiar with because ILS um, is uh, one of the approaches that is widely used by most of the uh, people who are on simulation. Uh, but in this video today, I'm going to show you the difference between, between the ILS approach and the RNAV approach and how to perform a landing if you're using RNAV approach because most of the runways in the world um, have ILS, but uh, if there is no ILS, then either you go for uh, an RNAV approach or a VOR approach. Likewise in Kathmandu, if you are trying to do a flight to Nepal, Kathmandu, um, there are only two options available, RNAV or VOR. Uh, so that's why it's, if you don't know how to perform an RNAV approach and landing, you won't be able to land at those airports. Although um, you might land, but uh, still it will not be as per the proper um, procedures um, if you don't know how to perform an RNAV approach and a landing. Right now, I'm going to do a short flight on my favorite route. That's uh, Lahore to Islamabad, 45 minutes of flight, a very short distance to cover. Um, and you can see it's raining in Lahore right now. Uh, so it's cloudy. The flight will be uh, really good. And uh, here I am in the A-Bus A320 Neos cockpit. You can see it's raining. I think Islamabad, it's not raining, but in Lahore, it's raining. Or maybe in Islamabad as well. We will see it um, on our way to um, uh, Islamabad. So right now I'm at the runway 36, right? I have just skipped um, the starter procedures for this plane because I've already covered. But uh, for the flight planning part, I have just left it empty. As you can see, there's no flight plan loaded over here in the navigation display. Um, I am assuming uh, that the people um, at a very beginners level will be watching this video. So that's why I'm going to just take you uh, step by step through all the procedures. As in Airbus A320, there is no top of descent and top of climb indication in the navigation display and we have to rely on the radio communication that's why I will do the communication with the ATC and uh, once I've got the clearance from the ATC to land at a runway I will select uh, the runway anyhow for this uh, um, uh, video right now up till up till this point I will select a runway to land but um, let's see if I am able to change the runway I will change it otherwise we will just go with the runway that I've entered in the flight plan. So uh, first of all, go to the um, initialization page and let's uh, start the initialization. That will be OPLA from Lahore to Islamabad. Go back, a uh, cost index I will keep it at 15 and uh, flight level will be 250. All these points have already been covered in the previous video. So if you just go in the description, you will see link uh, to all these things in which I've uh, shown you how to uh, program the MCDU and enter the flight plan. So all this, this information is already there in the videos. If you want to uh, go back and watch those videos, it's good because you should have some familiarity with the Airbus A320neo and plus the flight planning and everything in order to uh, do an RNAV approach. Uh, so let's go to the flight plan and I will be flying out from uh, OPLA and departure 36 right and uh, the SID will be a MOOC 2D. Let's select this. And uh, press insert. Now Omugi is insert. After Omugi, I will go to Salna. Omugi, Salna and then Indic. This is the last waypoint. Insert and for the arrival, now, in the arrival, I will actually select, you can see all these op options, ILS, um, 10 right and 10 left and everything. Let's open the charts it, because it will be easy to look at the charts. This will make life more easy. I have a subscription for the Navigraph charts. I've been telling you uh, uh, before in my videos. Um, it's good to have this uh, subscription because then you get access to all the charts. But if you don't want to have a subscription, you can find these charts over the internet by searching it in the Google. Just simply type in, let's say, OPI space airport charts and you might get them, might be updated. 
um, but it's good to have an every graph subscription these are the jepson charts uh, and uh, to be only used uh, for the flight navigation and flight simulation um, so uh, not to be used in the real life okay so now getting to the point uh, go to opis and uh, i'll just open different approaches for opis let's uh, also increase uh, it's actually too big now it's good so if you go to this approach tab you will see all the runways with different types of approaches um and over here if you go to 28 left which um, um is the runway i will be selecting to land you will see there are different um approaches coming this is a normal ils uh, or localizer z runway 28 left approach this is for category 2 and 3 in low visibility if you want to perform an auto land then this is ils localizer y so the, for every approach plate there is a different procedure that you have to follow and uh, this is um, the rnp runway 28 left which is used for rnav uh, now just to begin with rnav is actually um uh, an abbreviation for area navigation and uh, in uh, area navigation when you are performing an rnav navigation there is no ground based uh, navigation aid used so um as you can see that over here in the ils approach you have a navigation um uh, based at the ground which is known as the localizer which actually um sets the glide slope for the plane in order to land at the runway so let's say um if you're performing an ils approach you will be intersecting um the glide slope at 3700 feet which is um, at the point renex and after this you will go to this point is 411 and from here uh, you will uh, actually be uh, taken towards the runway with the help of a localizer because localizer um carries out a proper descent towards the runway so it's kind of a radio signals getting omitted from a ground based device but over here in R rnp or an rnav approach uh, once you are landing there is no ground based aid as you can see there is no radio frequency coming only um, um, the vor uh, for the sambandh international airport is coming 114.6 but you can see there is no localizer information as why well as it is given over here 279 degrees 108.1 so you simply dial in the frequency and you follow this uh, glide slope and this is how you land but in case of an rnp you can see there is no ground based aid but these are the instructions which are given over here so let's say if you are coming uh, from this point indic let me just go back and start with this point indic so if you are coming from indic you will be coming to this point isdo which is actually the via and after isdo uh, let's open this uh, chart you will go to renex and after this is411 and then you will land at this runway and for every waypoint there is an altitude given that you have to be at that altitude so now coming to the point rnp stands for required navigational precision while performing an rnav approach uh, your uh, navigational precision should be really high because uh, it, there is no ground based uh, navigation device there is no ndb no ils no vor Uh, so that's why yeah uh, you have to have a very high accuracy of gps so that you are exactly at those points number 1 and number 2 you are at the right altitude so there are two things that you have to keep into mind and consideration is the high level of accuracy for your gps as you can see and the accuracy if you go to the progress over here in the mcdu which is the multifunction control and display unit you will see accuracy is high coming over here So as we are doing a flight in the simulator and it's always high so you don't have to worry about that maybe in real life uh, the accuracy changes uh, but uh, for the simulation purpose you can see the accuracy is really high so for this number one the accuracy has to be high so that you are exactly at those points you are not deviating from the runway like was you following this line or you are not on or right to the sign or left to the sign or once you come near the runway you see that uh, you are not aligned with the runway and you have to perform it again number 1 number 2 at different distances there is a different altitude that's required as you can see at isdo you should be uh, 6000 feet and above 
but it's um, i always used to tell this thing that at this point you should be at 6000 but people used to comment on my videos that you should not be at 6000 you can be 6000 or higher so just to keep it uh, the thing simple for the beginners i always say you should be at 6000 because this is the minimum altitude you cannot be at 5000 or 4000 but 6000 and above is good but obviously if you are at a higher altitude it will be very difficult for you to intercept the glide slope and at renex you should be at 3700 so it's a very simple and basic procedure and once you come here you will activate the approach um by pressing this button once you activate approach just like by uh, the way you do it in ils approach uh, you will see an a square box over here and uh, then you will actually uh, follow the square box just like uh, a box is always a square why i'm saying a square box <laughs> sorry for this um this thing happens <laughs> okay so you will see uh, a square over here and uh, um, you it has to be in the middle if it is high it means you are coming at a lower altitude if it's low you coming at a, a lower altitude a higher altitude uh, so you have to adjust your altitude in such a way that you are intercepting the glide slope like this at 3 degrees you you should be once uh, you start your descent from is411 this is this will be the final descent point in your flight plan so once you are at is411 uh you will pitch down by 3 degrees and then you will start to move towards the runway and you don't have to do it yourself uh you will hit the approach button this box will start to appear over here and then your plane will automatically follow this glide slope at an angle of 3 degrees as you can see And, uh, and the distance is 6 nautical miles as you can see at 10 nautical miles at uh, 10.1 nautical miles you should be at 3700 feet and uh, at 6 nautical miles before the runway uh, you start your descent you hit the approach button and then you try to land now it's a very basic thing in this approach you will not be uh, pressing the ls uh, button because if you press ls then ils uh, frequency will actually pick up um, um the localizer's frequency sorry not the ils uh, frequency but the ils will pick up um as uh, if if you enter it over here if I, if i select ils the frequency will be given over here so then the plane will actually perform an ils landing but in this we will not be activating ls we will be just activating approach and the rest of the things are just like the ils so it's a very basic uh, basic thing the only few things which are different If you uh, compare the ILS uh, with R uh, RNP, I will just show you. At this, you can see there is one more difference. Um, you can see the waypoints are the same. Renex, and then there are other points. IS four one one, which is uh, D six point one. But if you enter uh, this information, the ILS approach in your uh, uh, flight planning, I'll just show you one difference. The difference is very clear. So let's say I'm going to right now perform an ILS. So if i select destination i select arrival and i select ils28 let's uh, open instead of z let's let's open this because i am i'll be selecting y so ils or localize y runway 28 left and for this uh, and the star is indy 1a and uh, via is isdo so we have to select isdo as you can see it over here it's coming as isdo but if you are coming from this side of the runway from the left side then it's uh, kemul so if i select isdo and if i go to the flight plan you can see the points are different at renox is not coming after isdo it's fi2ly and before fi2ly there is also ci2ly fi2ly is the is the final descent point now uh, whereas over here in the chart it shows um i i'm not wrong where it where it is i think it shows is114 no it doesn't show it over here Okay, I think it was showing it over here. Renex, yes, it shows e Renex and IS four one one, but in Y it doesn't show um, um, this uh, Renex point. Whereas uh, if you're using uh, uh, the ILS twenty eight left, then it will show F I two L Y and C I two L Y. Now, if uh, there is this one difference, um, uh, which I will, I just wanted to elaborate to you that if you select um, ILS, the waypoints will be different than the R N P. So what if I select RNP? So let's go to destination and let's select arrivals. And if I scroll down, I will see RNAV arrivals. And over here, RNAV 28 left. So for RNAV 28 left, remember this thing: 
the star and the transition will remain the same. Everything remains the same. The only difference is this. You don't activate LS while performing an R-Nav approach. If I want to keep it simple. So let's go over here. And let's select Indy 1A, which is already selected. And ISDOR is the transition. And select Insert. Now after this point, you will see VNEX is coming. And IS411 is coming. So which means uh, this is an RNP approach or RNAV approach and landing. And if you even select here arrivals, you will see RNAV 28 left is to ND1A. So everything remains the same. And um, you can see that uh, there's also, if I am not wrong, if I am not wrong, it, um, I think if you are using Phoenix, uh, simulation Airbus A320, you will see uh, the angle of descent, which is 3 degrees. So it also appears over here, which is, I think, not coming over here. Anyhow, we will just ignore it because the plane will automatically follow uh, this, uh, this, this path at the angle of 3 degrees and it will land at the runway. Now, there is another difference over here. And uh, the difference is uh, regarding the decision height. So decision height is actually at height at which you hear uh, the call out minimums this is the point where you if you don't have a visual with the runway or if you see that the ILS has not properly aligned your plane with the runway you have the time to actually abort the landing so that's why it's known as a decision height it is the height at which you take a decision whether to go with the landing or not so in case of ILS the decision height is 200 feet above the ground as you can see the runway elevation is 1747 feet uh, over here so just uh, at 1947 feet or 200 feet above the ground you will hear this information so this is another difference and if you go into the rnp arrivals you will see that the decision height is 318 feet only because of the precision issues once you are performing uh, an ILS category one or ILS category 2 and 3, uh, the minimums um, go up to even 100 feet, as you can see. I category 2 is goes up to 100 feet. So, but in case of uh, RNP, as uh, precision can be an issue, that's why it's 300 feet above the ground. So, if th uh, above 300 uh, um, uh, feet above the ground, if you cannot see the runway, if you're not aligned with the runway, you can still decide not to land. So this is uh, one of uh, the things, but just to keep things simple, as you have seen the charts I've been showing you back and forth between the ILS approach and the RNP, they're almost the same. The decision height is only different. There is no LS, it, but it's the approach is there. Now I will uh, start the flight and uh, I will try to land at OPIS 28 left. So let's begin the flight because I just wanted to touch these topics. This is very important before I do the flight because it takes a lot of time and then from there on yes enable weather this airport I'm not ignoring it ATC communication let's set it to AI and uh, the parking brakes are released so let's start a flight I just want to record this moment because it's raining <laughs> it's been a long time haven't done a flight in rain so let's uh, take this plane in the air, go through the clouds, enjoy a nice flight. I haven't entered the takeoff performance, that's why on the PFD you will not see um, the V1. Oh, it's coming, it's already there. Good, that's good. Okay, so let's uh, take this plane off the runway and uh, try to it's windy yes from the left side let's retract the flaps Let's uh, set the throttle to climb. Okay, and let's set the autopilot. Lahore Tower Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray 320 frequency change. 
For approach Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320 is type Airbus A20 entry miles north of Lahore 3,200 feet. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Airbus Alpha Sierra X-Ray 320 Lahore approach. So the clouds were only at uh, Lahore, but now you can see there are no clouds as I was expecting that obviously in Islamabad it's not raining right now. So that's why the weather is clear. <laughs> okay, so now I will actually wait um, for the approach. I will go through the flight and uh, I will just uh, take you through the procedures uh, for the RMP. Now I've got the clearance from the ATC to start the descent. So let's uh, start uh, the descent and first of all turn on the constraints so that I can see whether I'm at the right altitude or not. And let's reduce the altitude to 6000 and let's start the descent. And uh, before uh, we land, we have to actually enter all this information related to the approach. So let's get the weather information because I will be turning off the ATC. I don't want any interruptions in the video and obviously um, um, ATC might tell me to land at runway 10, 10 left or right or 28 right. So I don't want to mess up with my flight plan. <laughs> so as soon as I get the clearance for 3700, I will just turn off the ATC so that we can carry out the approach. Remember one thing that in this video, I've... Uh, explained it to you before that uh, this is an RNP approach which means required navigational precision and in this um, kind of an approach and landing the navigational precision should be very accurate and high uh, because then the plane will be actually able to follow all the constraints and everything and will follow um, uh, the glide slope uh, to the to the runway so the weather information has to be accurately entered over here because um, um, only um, if this information is accurate, then your plane will know that what altitude the plane should be at different points. So it, it should be really accurate. I'm using a side windy and uh, it's a very good side and it gives you a very good uh, information about the weather. I will be also trying to find out some places where it's, uh, it's raining and the hurricanes and just try to fly over there. So you can see over here that in the meter, uh, the QNH given is 1011. And the wind over here is uh, 230, 20 knots. And the gust is 30. So, 1011 two, one, one and 230.20. So, let's enter it over here, 1011. 230.20. Okay. And the temperature in Sambad is 30 degrees. Now for the decision height, let's get back to the charts and uh, let's just show you one thing. I'll also keep these uh, charts handy and just over here so that I can show you how it is performing this approach. Uh, so let's go to OPIS and uh, let's go to approach and uh, select RNP and runway 28 left. And you can see the decision height over here is 318 if you enter the radio or for the barometric pressure is 2065. So I will enter 2065 MDA. You can also enter radio 318, but uh, this barometric pressure is good. So now we have entered uh, the approach information which is required. And um, as soon as I'm uh, below 10,000 feet, I will activate uh, the approach phase. Now I am below 10,000 feet so I can activate the approach okay so now I'm clear to ISDOR let's open so now I have uh, changed the radio frequency because I don't want any ATC interaction uh, somehow when I was uh, about to reach ISDOR um, the Simulation crashed. I don't know why. So I had to do this flight all over again. And if you find anything different, kindly excuse me for that because I don't have, uh, again, the time and the patience to do this video all over again because I've, I had did the most of the chunk of the video before reaching this point. Uh, so let's uh, load the charts again. I think there is an issue in the charts. 
So let's go to OPIS and uh, as you can see, I'm about to reach ISDO and uh, the altitude over here should be 6,000 feet or more and uh, the speed should be 2,000, 220 knots, <laughs> 2,000, okay. So I'll just uh, right now activate the speed brake so that the speed, uh, speed is reduced because I am now in the approach phase, as you can see, the approach phase is already there. I think previously I was at 7,700 over here. But anyhow, I'm just, uh, um, what I'll do is this, just to be on the safer side, at this point, um, I have to be at 3,700. So straight away, let's set 3,700 over here. And let's uh, disengage the spoilers, activate the ground spoilers, and uh, let's be at, uh, let's set the altitude to 3700. Yes. So right now you can see, I'm just hardly 700 feet above um, uh, at this point, uh, the, the given altitude, the constraint. And afterwards, um, I'll just now load the chart for the airport. Now you can see I'm about to reach ISDO, 6,000 feet. So the descent is good. Now usually by this point, if you are performing an ILS approach, you turn on the um, LS. But right now I will not be um, switching this option on. Just before this uh, point, the final descent point IS411, I will uh, start uh, the approach and you will see uh, this box coming over here which will uh, tell me about my vertical deviation uh, from the uh, slope which is at 3 degrees towards the runway after IS411. So uh, just to uh, summarize everything, uh, just remember one thing that RNAV is not different than um, ILS. The only difference, the only difference is uh, the ground-based navigation device and the plane's built-in capability to follow uh, the flight path and plus uh, the the glide slope to the runway. So instead of uh, turning on the LS, you simply turn on the approach and the plane will automatically descend towards the runway. Because uh, once you enter information in the MCDU, which is the multifunction control and display unit, the flight management uh, and the guidance system, which is FMGS, will automatically program itself in such a way that it will follow this path and will land at the runway. So that's the magic of it. And plus, as you can see, we are having a high precision um, of uh, GPS so that's why it's following the path correctly there is no deviation uh, or the lateral deviation from the flight path so right now the plane is at uh, 4900 so it's good I can further extend the flaps to position uh, 2 oh now it's 1 <laughs> I didn't uh, initially I did that <laughs> so let's uh, set the flaps uh, to position 2 so just before the landing, make sure the ground spoilers are activated and uh, plus uh, this brakes are set to medium. And everything is looking good so far. 3,700 um, is my altitude. And uh, it's very easy. So uh, in the next coming few days, I will also try to uh, do the VOR approach and landing. And uh, hopefully with this, um, I think I have almost covered all the aspects of the Airbus A320neo. The secondary flight plan, I wanted to do this video, but secondary flight plan is not available in this plane. And uh, plus, uh, you cannot uh, hold, uh, perform a hold with this plane. And uh, one more thing, which is entering uh, the manual, uh, sorry, or what you can say, customized uh, waypoints. You cannot enter the coordinates or anything like this. So there are the three um, restrictions about this plane. So right now you can see the plane is uh, leveling off at uh, 3700. So um, it means we are at a good side. If I turn on the approach right now, let's see what happens. Can I see the box? No. Actually in the Phoenix Airbus A320, uh, this box starts to appear uh, even if you don't turn on the approach. So this is a very good thing. But over here in this plane, I have noticed that it doesn't come uh, till the point uh, plane is near uh, this point or, or above this point. So now you can see the plane is uh, following the flight path. I can uh, turn off the charts because right now I'm going to perform a landing. 
my landings are not really good but somehow for the past few days i have been doing some good landings so hopefully in this video i'll have some good landing and uh, with this i think uh, yes two nautical miles to go i can uh, lower the gears set the flaps to full just uh, to be on the safe side i'm checking whether this information is here or not because i don't have the patience to do this flight all over again in order to just see this uh, box appearing over here <laughs> i have to do it uh, all over again but it can it comes uh, let's do it again let's activate approach because it already comes as i told you before in the phoenix it already comes i think after is1 uh, 411 it should come yes and now you can see the boss the box appeared and the plane is now descending towards the runway without us doing anything without activating ls and then approach simply just before the final descent point as per the uh, flight charts just uh, activate approach and as soon as you are over uh this uh, final descent point this box will appear and your plane will actually start to descend towards the runway going for an approach so flaps full ground spoilers activated gears down and uh, just wait for the runway oh seat belt signs i didn't turn them on anyhow you can turn them on right now smoking signs were also off maybe somebody was smoking in the plane <laughs> and now you can see the runway uh, and you can see the plane is now descending towards the runway so performing an arnav approach and uh, a landing is really simple it's as simple as ils um, i always thought it's a bit difficult to do but it's very easy the flight management um, and guidance system of the abas a320 neo is really good and uh, the way this uh, plane is programmed in the microsoft flight simulator it really amazes me there is another approach that i tried few days back that's a dme arc approach i will also try to cover this video today i was doing a flight from bahrain to riyadh and in at riyadh airport uh, if you're landing it's basically a dme arc approach you have to fly a dme arc so the best thing about this plane is this that whenever you select an approach the dme arc is also updated accordingly i can deactivate the autopilot plane slightly went right But anyhow so this was uh, the video for the arnav approach and arrival and uh, you can see it was easy to do not really difficult and um, i just really enjoyed it maybe next flight i will be doing uh, towards uh, kathmandu to perform an arnav approach and uh, landing uh, and i hope this video was a helpful video for you and you will also be able to perform some arnav approaches and landings With this I would just like to end my video. If you have got any questions do ask me in the comment section. I will try to respond to your questions in time. And uh, plus if you want to add anything to this video, you're more than most welcome to use the comment section. Thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.